My turn. Okay. Um, what what phone network is Norman Bates on? Do you remember Psycho? E E. E E E. That's my own joke, by the way. We've just been doing riddles just before we were ready to come online. So welcome everyone. For those of you that don't know who I am, I'm Nick, I'm the youth and children's worker and it is my honour to be here today and welcome you all to church. And what a lovely day it is as well, so sunny, um, remembering all the good things that God has done for us and how great God is. So let me pray before I hand over to the band. Yeah, Lord, we thank you that we can come here today, whether in person or online or watch later, and be in your presence, Lord. Be in your presence with our family, Lord, our friends and family who are here, Lord, and we thank you how great you are, and in times of trouble, we can still remember that you are great, Lord, and in times of joy, we can remember how great you are, Lord. In times of sadness, we can remember how great you are. In your mighty name, amen. amen. Thank you, Richard. Amen. Uh, morning, everyone. We're going to start with a hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Please stand.
salvation cries. Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing. We're not alone. We're not alone. We are singing your praises with all of creation, with all of your angels, with all of your people. Lord, we praise your name. And Lord, we bring you our situations this week, some full of joy, some of despair, some of full of tribulation and trouble. But Lord, we declare that you are Lord. You are Lord of every situation. We put our trust in you, Lord. We may not be able to see the end from the beginning, but, but Lord, we know you have it in control. We bless you, Lord. Thank you. Be with us this morning, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Please sit down. Thanks, Richard and the band. And uh, wonderful to sing God's praises here this morning. Um, so tonight we have a service at 6.30. This is called uh, Living Water. It's an opportunity to come and, and rest in God's presence and just be with him. So I invite you to come. It's, it's a great time of worship. Uh, and actually Rich will be back leading us uh, this evening in an extended time of worship. So come for Living Water at 6.30. And then I, I believe there's a football match on after that. <clears throat> is that true? Yeah. It certainly is. So we... Um, you come at 6.30 to pray for the England team, and then 8 o'clock we'll see what happens. But maybe we can just hear about some of our players, because um, several of them have a Christian faith, and it would be good to pray for them. Whether England win or they lose, just let's pray for them that, um, that, uh, that these young men who are role models uh, would stay close to the Lord. I wonder if we can see on the screen. So here we go, I've got to read it. Mark Gehi, he tries to be a role model and shows God's graciousness through God's glory in, and God's glory in his life. And did you know his dad is a pastor of a church and he plays the drums in the worship band as well. <laughs> so there you go. Or, or he certainly used to when he had more time. Uh, Ebereki Ezi, my faith allows me to realign my focus and know that there's something greater and that there's a deeper purpose as to why I'm in the position I'm in. And there he is making the sign of the cross and he does work for uh, people in his community. Ivan Tony was raised a devout Christian by his mum and still says a prayer before every single match. He's also got the Ten Commandments tattooed on his back. <laughs> and then finally, you might well have heard of this young man, Bukayo Saka. Um, on his Instagram account, his description of himself is simply God's child. And here he is on YouTube describing how he reads the Bible every day. And uh, he said, this is my Bible. So let's pray for these guys. Um, they have a big influence. And uh, Father, thank you for these young men who know you. And uh, we pray with all the spotlight and all the pressure that they're under, we pray help them to know that they are loved by you. Whatever may happen tonight. <laughs> Lord, we pray your blessing on them all. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So uh, we also have an AGM on Tuesday, and that'll be at 8 o'clock in the church, and uh, invite you to come along for that. I believe Nicola had an announcement. I can't even see it. There you are. <clears throat> so Messy Church is um, this Saturday. Uh, obviously, because I've not been around, it's very last minute, I'm aware. <laughs> um, but I do have loads of food that need filling for this Saturday. So if you are around at all and can do any sandwich prep or sausage rolls or cupcakes or 
no flat decks have been done, I think. Or oh, fruit. <laughs> Please do let me know. There's a sign-up sheet over there. If you can at all help as well, um, if you were around maybe to be in the kitchen um, on the Saturday, that would be really helpful as well. It's only it's about two hours in the kitchen. If you come for 11, leave at 1 or half 12, whatever works for you, that would be really appreciated because obviously cause I'm last minute trying to get it together. But we do have over 20 kids signed up already, so hopefully it will be a really good uh, message. Here. So, yeah, thank you very much. Bless you, Nick. Thank you very much. And we pray now for our children. Father, um, as they go to Ark, we pray they have a wonderful time and encounter you. Thank you for all that you're doing in our children's lives. May they know that <clears throat> they belong to you. And bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. So we'll see Ark later. I think you're... Well, I don't know what you're doing. Ark, okay. Off you go, guys. We'll see you later. And the rest of us will stay in here. We're going to carry on worshipping um, as we sing. And... Um, um, there'll be an opportunity to worship God with our money as well if you're visiting please don't worry but the bags go around we give God praise through money as well and uh, just an opportunity to support the ministry of the church thank you Richard stand uh, am I on? yes please stand good in me. You are my, my love, display for all to see. You are light, you are light, when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin.
for your kindness Thank you for your mercy Thank you for the cross Thank you for the price you sit down um, and uh, <clears throat> I want to welcome Daph she's going to come and lead us in some prayers you haven't been up the front for a little while so we are delighted that this morning you are coming back um, to lead us in some prayers and after that Alison's going to read us um, bring us the Bible reading look at that good morning hello everyone wasn't sure I was going to be doing this today, but during the week, the Lord changed my mind. And the reason for that is because I was sent the report for what happened to me back on that day in February. And I woke up on that morning. You won't have heard this story before, most of you. I woke up that morning and I, my legs did not work. 
And I laid in my bed and thought, my legs do not work. And so I called for Dave and I said, my legs don't work. And uh, so he helped me out of bed and I immediately went. And his training kicked in immediately because he's a first aider. He put me in the recovery position, called next door. I'm glad Roy's here today because it was his daughter Peggy who lives next door to me, came and handled the 991 call centre. And while she was talking and explaining to them, and she was using strange language, hushed tones, because she didn't want to scare either of us in case we didn't know what was going on. And I didn't because my head wasn't there, actually. And anyway, while she was onto the call centre, two burly ambulance men ran up the stairs. They took me off. And I remember getting in the ambulance outside my home. Peggy said goodbye to me in there. Dave was in the ambulance with me. And the ambulance took off. And I was told that we were going to Maidstone. OK, going to Maidstone. That is the last thing that I remember. I have to thank the surgeons and the, London, the Royal London Hospital where I was taken, who performed an operation to remove the clot. And the only thing I remember was that morning and the next 24 hours I know nothing at all about until I woke up and I was in Maidstone Hospital. And I didn't know where I'd been or what had happened to me. Um, the reason I'm telling you this is because Dan just kept walked up because the reason I didn't want to do it because I didn't know if I could trust myself to get up from there to here. Well, I'm here to tell you that that lovely lady over there, Beryl, my friend, who's a little bit older than me, so has known me all my life, every time she sees me, she says to me, you are our miracle. And I am because my legs work. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to lead us in some prayers, okay? The verse that comes to mind is, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or even imagine. Hallelujah. Father God, I feel like, and I'm actually going to do it, take my shoes off. This is holy. This is holy ground. And Lord, I just want to thank you. There aren't enough words in the English dictionary to say how grateful I am, how much I thank you for your faithfulness to me from the minute I was born to this minute and going forward. Lord, and Lord, I want to th thank you because when we ask you to do things and you do it, we must never forget to come back and say, thank you, thank you, Lord. And Father, I want to begin now by thanking you for the answers to prayer that we've, we know about for Richard, Lord, how his workload has been far too much. And Lord, I have prayed constantly asking that Richard would not only find favour with God, but would find favour with man. Lord, and I want to testify that that for Richard has happened just this week. He has found favour with man and his workload has been lightened. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for that. Lord, I want to thank you too for other answers to prayers. Lord, I want to pray and thank you for Ruth, Lord, and I pray that as she completes a, chemo, a radiotherapy, sorry, from Monday to Thursday of this week, Lord, that that would complete and fully restore her, Lord. Her healing would be complete, Lord. Pray that in your name, Father, in your son's name. Lord, and I want to bring my friend Jean to you, Lord, who's had her knee up. That's been successful. But, Lord, she can't stay awake. And in one way, that's good because she doesn't feel the pain, Lord. But I pray, Lord, that when she wakes, 
that she, the pain will be, each day that goes by, that pain from the knee will be less and less, Lord. And I thank you for the healing that is happening while she sleeps, Lord. Thank you, thank you. And Lord, there are others I want to bring you. Lord, I want to bring you Rob and Deborah, who had COVID, Lord, and he's still testing positive. But Deborah's mother, Josie, was in hospital from Wednesday till yesterday. Lord, and she's back home now, and Deborah's looking after her. Lord, I pray that that stay in hospital, Lord, was very short, Lord, and I pray for restoration, not just for, Ro for Josie, Lord, but for Rob and Deborah following their COVID, Lord. Lord, I want to bring you Rosemary, Father, and ask you to touch her again and heal her, Lord. Miracles are still, you are still the God of miracles, Father. And I pray for healing for Rosemary, Lord, for Jean and for Ruth. Lord, and I want to pray too, Lord, that you would hold on very tightly, Lord, to those who are still grieving the loss, Lord. Maybe of their loved one, Lord, do they know of a loved one? Hold on to them tight, Lord, because it's so difficult when we're struggling to always hold on to you, Father. So I pray that you would hold on tightly to them and they would know that you are holding them, Lord. Even when they can't pray for themselves, we can, Lord, and we can ask you to hold them in your ever-loving arms. Lord, I want to bring you the world stage, Lord. Lord, I want to thank you for the things in our world that have excited or thrilled us in this past week, Lord. Thinking of Patrick's family and the birth of his granddaughter, Lord. What a thrill that is, and we thank you for that, Lord. Because you want to give good gifts to us, Lord, because you're our Heavenly Father, and your faithfulness to us, Lord, it goes without fear or favour to us, Lord. It's just your faithfulness, because you love us, Lord. You are faithful. You are a faithful God. Lord, and I pray for those that are struggling for whatever reason, Lord, that they would know you are holding them. Sometimes when we can't pray for ourselves, Lord, we need others to pray for us. And we thank you for those prayers, for those like the ones who let their friend down through the, that carry us, Lord, in the times when we can't carry or even metaphorically our legs and our prayer legs don't work lord we thank you for them but lord we want to bring you the world stage of those things that have saddened us or dismayed us when we've seen the news lord either through violence or neglect lord the violence of war the violence of the things we've read, Lord, like the suitcase that was left on the bridge, Lord, the horror of that. And, and those, I believe they were men, Lord, most of her family, they may have just disappeared, they may not have known or whatever, Lord. And I pray for those that found that, saw that grisly sight, as it were, Lord. I pray that the trauma of that would be lifted from them, Lord. Lord, and the other things that we have seen that have dismayed us, Lord, like the crossbow murders, Lord, horrendous for that husband and father, Lord, and I can't imagine where he is, Lord. I just pray for your mercy for him. Lord, and for those that lost their lives trying to cross the English Channel again just this week, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would hold us in your everlasting arms, Lord. Everlasting arms. 
Lord, we ask all these things in the glorious and powerful name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Today's reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honour than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honour than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, bearing witness to what would be spoken by God in the future. But Christ is faithful as the son over God's house, and we are his house, if indeed we hold firmly to the confidence and the hope in which we glory. And the second reading is taken from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Thank you, Alison. Um, I want to tell you about an old geezer. We've got a few of them in our church, actually. (laughs) There's a new men's geezers club on Tuesdays that meet as well. Um, No, this geezer is is actually in the United States. uh, And this geezer um, very reliably erupts with water every couple of hours or so. And, and, and it, it shoots up boiling water for about, I don't know, a few, couple of minutes, five minutes, whatever, and then stops again. But you can be sure that a couple of hours later or so, it will do the same thing again. What's the name of this old geezer? Old Faithful. Has anybody been out to the States and seen Old Faithful? Is it, am I right? Well, what, was my, what I'm saying more or less true? Yeah? Yeah. In Yellowstone... Uh, in the park in Yellowstone. And it was named Old Faithful because this geezer is reliable. Some of you are reliable geezers as well. And so... So it's faithful. It's maybe predictable. Um, Can't quite set your watch by it, but nonetheless, it does what you expect it to do. And we're thinking today about this word, faithfulness and how this is part of the fruit of God's Holy Spirit. We see fruit as evidence of the work of God in our lives. And we've already been looking at love and joy and peace and patience and kindness uh, and goodness. And today we think about how if God is at work in our lives, through his Holy Spirit, there'll be evidence of that. And we'll see faithfulness. We'll experience the faithfulness of God and we might see it at work in us. So if someone is faithful, we might think of them as, you know, that, a bit like that old geezer, reliable, predictable. We might say, well, it's, it's not very exciting, is it, being faithful? Perhaps it's boring. But actually being faithful is the foundation of, of fun and freedom. <laughs> uh, without faithfulness, uh, there's just insecurity because you just don't know where you stand. Uh, if if a, a husband and wife are faithful to each other and they're committed, then the kids, well, they have like a good springboard from which to um, live their lives. But without that faithfulness, you know, it can breed insecurity. So faithfulness might not seem very exciting, but actually it's 
really essential and it can lead to freedom, it can lead to more fun. Faithfulness. And it's clearly a part of God's character. We've already sang, great is thy faithfulness, Lord. There's a book in the Old Testament called Lamentations. If you're feeling a bit low, I would not read the book of Lamentations. (laughs) It is depressing. It was actually written uh, at, at perhaps the lowest point in the history of the people of God. The city of Jerusalem had been under siege and they were uh, it, it, seeing incredible suffering and hardship and awful things were happening. And I mean awful. And off the back of that, it's thought that Jeremiah wrote the book of Lamentations. And it's five poems, one after the other. Uh, and the bit we always remember is the middle bit where it says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And somehow, in the middle of the book of Lamentations, they remember the faithfulness of God. And that, it's taking it out of context, like I just did doesn't do justice to the book of Lamentations. If you read it, it's very dark, it's very difficult. And yet somehow, by amazing grace, they manage to remember the faithfulness of God in the midst of that. So we're looking here at um, a reference to Moses. And Moses is described as someone who was faithful in the house of God. He was a faithful servant in God's house. Now, this is the letter to the Hebrews, and Hebrews, um, the people who received that letter were um, Jewish believers. They'd come to believe in Jesus, but their background was Jewish. So they knew the whole story of the Bible. They knew the Old Testament, back to front. And so to remind them of Moses was like, well, Moses is, he's the top guy. And if you refer to Moses, he's, he's like, well, We all love Moses. He was um, the one who led people out of slavery uh, and into freedom. He was the the one whom God used in uh, the most celebrated act of redemption in the Old Testament. That's Moses. And they say, yeah, Moses was faithful in the house of God. He was a faithful servant. We acknowledge that. But he refers to Moses in order to then say, and yet Jesus is so much better. Was Jesus just Moses Mark II? Was he just an upgrade? We're used to upgrades, aren't we? Have anyone ever upgraded? You upgrade your phone or you upgrade your computer's operating system. Was that, is that all that Jesus was? No. Actually, the writer here says, well, Moses was awesome and he was faithful, but Jesus is a whole other story. See, Moses was a servant in the house of God, but Jesus was the son. Jesus is the son over God's house. A couple of weeks ago, um, I did a a gig at uh, um, a place called Squarey's Court. Squarey's Court is a manor house in Westerham. And, uh, you know, the only reason I go to such places is because I'm doing a gig there. Um, But there was a, a kind of uh, they have a vineyard there and they were doing wine tasting and all this sort of thing and it was a corporate thing. And <clears throat> Squarey's Court, however, is a, a hundred years, hundreds of years old building uh, that's been handed down the generations. And uh, if you're a fan of the TV series Bridgerton, it's featured in the latest series of Bridgerton. And it's been a, uh, also featured in other period dramas. Anyway, at Squarey's Court we had this function and the owner of the house was there. His name's Henry, and uh, he's involved with all these functions. And uh, if you re- go on their website, you find out that about 20 years ago, he and his father decided they were going to build a vineyard. So there's a vineyard up, uh, Squarey's Winery up at Westerham. So I got to meet him, or he came and at least talked to us in the band. I met the son. <coughs> now, I can imagine with a, with a manor house like that, with, with a sort of, a well-to-do family like that, they've got servants. 
they've got, certainly got you know, gardeners and they've got servants in the house. And just, I can imagine that they, they might have had a servant who'd served the different generations. He'd served the father, he'd served the son, and he'd been there. And that, a servant like that would know the house. They'd know the house back to front. Now, I didn't meet a servant, but I can imagine there was a servant like that. But I did meet the son. And he was basically carrying on the family business, doing all these corporate events in order to keep Squarey's Court going. Well, this is Jesus. He's faithful in God's house as a son. And we're encouraged to meet the son. (laughs) Not to encounter a servant, but to encounter the son in God's house, who is faithful. Jesus was faithful to God's call on him. Something else I did recently was uh, I went on a retreat. I went to a place called Worth Abbey. About 20 years ago, there was a TV program called Monastery. I did, does anyone ever remember, remember that program? And it was set in Worth Abbey. And there was all sorts of people of different faith, no faith. They just rocked up for a retreat. Uh, and it was an interesting sort of reality TV program. Anyway, I went to this same place, Worth Abbey. And... Uh, there are monks there. It's a Benedictine, um, I was going to say monkery. That's not the right word, is it? Um, <laughs> monastery. <clears throat> and uh, on day one, I got to meet Father Peter. And I, I, I asked him, so, how long have you been here? And Father Peter, I thought he might just say, oh, I've been here a few years. 30 years. I've been here 30 years. I was like, okay, that's, that's commitment. And then I found out later on in the week that Father Kevin had been at uh, Worth Abbey for 70 years. And six times a day, every single day, these monks meet in the abbey to chant the Psalms, to give God praise and to say prayers. You could call that faithfulness. I found out that Benedictine spirituality, one of the um, main things about it is, is, is is about being faithful about being stable, about staying put, about being solid. Now, do you think that's a little bit countercultural in our world today? <laughs> we go here, we go there. You never have a job for life these days. That's just the way the world is. We do all sorts of things. We move different places. But these monks have stayed in one place. There's something about that that is faithful. But what does it mean for us to be faithful? We're not monks. We're not nuns, not not, not to my knowledge. What does it mean for us to be faithful? Well, it means, actually, to be full of faith. You know, sometimes in church, you have a church which maybe one day was thriving. It was doing really well back in the day. But then it kind of diminishes, it declines, dwindles, and uh, then you're left with the few faithful who carry on and soldier on and keep the church going. Now, that could be amazing. And in some situations, you've had a church that's diminished to virtually nothing, and yet the few faithful have carried on, and they've prayed, and that's been the sort of seeds sown for the next generation, and then there's kind of almost a new church is born. That does happen. But dare I say it, more often what happens is the church gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and the old faithful, basically, they're just clinging on to the way it was. (laughs) The world's moved on, and dare I say, even perhaps the Holy Spirit has moved on. And they're not necessarily faithful to God, not necessarily faithful to Christ, they're faithful just to their church and to the way they're doing things. And the kingdom of God is doing something else. That's a distortion of faithfulness. That's not actually the faithfulness that God's calling us to have. Sometimes people are very faithful to their church or very faithful to their tiddlywinks club. And, you know, that's not bad. But the kind of faithful we're talking about here is being full of faith, but not faith in what we do, faith in God. And so the writer here says, fix your thoughts on Jesus. 
Being faithful is basically looking at Jesus. Keep my eyes on him. Do you ever fix your thoughts on just like one thing? Or are you like me and you find your thoughts going all over the shop? Fix your thoughts. Fix your mind. Fix your heart. Fix your eyes. Fix everything you've got on Jesus. Why? We acknowledge him as our apostle and high priest, we're told here. An apostle is just someone who has been sent And Jesus is the one sent from God to be God. (laughs) Sent from God to bring God to us. Sent from God to represent the Father God. And he's also our high priest. Again, that's a reference to the the way the Jews worshipped. They needed a high priest as a mediator between God and the people. And Jesus became the once for all high priest, our mediator between God and man. He also became the sacrifice that the high priest would make, uh, a sacrifice made once for all. Jesus, our apostle and our high priest, fix your thoughts on him. Fix your eyes on him. And being faithful is just looking to Jesus. It's looking to Jesus. Now you might say, well, do you know what? Whether I'd come to church or not this morning, it still would have happened. Others would have still come at 10 o'clock and it would have still happened. I presume someone would have opened the door. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, church would have still taken place in one form or another, whether I'd turn up or not. God's still active. God is still faithful, whether I am or not. Now, that is true. But... The danger with going thinking in in those terms is we can then think, but what I do then, it doesn't really matter. I'm not really that big a deal. Little old me. God's faithful, but oh, I'm I'm just I'm just a miserable sinner and 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 anyway, I, I probably shouldn't be here anyway. But that's a misunderstanding of who we really are. This passage started by addressing the readers, as holy brothers and sisters. If your trust is in Christ, you know what? You're not a miserable sinner anymore. That was your identity, but it's not anymore. Your identity primarily is you are now holy. We sang earlier that God is holy forever. When he calls us to be holy, well, we are already holy because the Holy Spirit is in us. And actually to deny that and to say, oh, no, 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 is a lie. He's in us. We are holy brothers and sisters. All of us will probably hear that. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not so sure about me. You know, maybe Tricia, sure, but not me. <laughs> holy brothers and sisters. That is your identity through what Jesus has done on the cross. And what else does he say here, the the writer, he, she? Holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling. We share in a call from heaven and a call to heaven. There's a calling to to, to go and be in heaven with with God, but also a a calling uh, uh, from heaven to do what God's calling us to do. We're sharing in this together. Jesus is our great high priest, but it's also true that we are all, if you like, priests. It's called the priesthood of all believers. And we're all in this together. We share in the heavenly calling. So does it matter whether I come to church or not? Does it matter whether I engage with God or not? Yes, it does matter. Because we've all got our part to play. We all share in the heavenly calling. We're all holy brothers and sisters. And if you're struggling to find your place in this church, please come and have a chat with me. And maybe we've missed something. Maybe, we've, um, maybe there's an oversight and we've got it wrong. Come and have a chat and we'll, we'll find out how you can find your place in this church fellowship, in this local church of holy brothers and sisters. Have you ever walked into a church and someone said, shh, you're in God's house now. Have you, ever, have you ever done that? 
Tell your kids to shut up because you're in God's house now. Maybe there's a big echoey cathedral. Shh. And you can hear the shh louder than you can hear <coughs> people. So I couldn't hear them talking, but now kind of shh. You're in God's house. And some buildings do inspire awe and reverence, right? They really do. You walk into St. Paul's Cathedral, I defy you not to look up and go, wow. Don't look up here, you might see a few cobwebs and cracks in the wall. (laughs) But actually, it's not biblical to say that the building is God's house, because who's who's God's house? We are. And it says exactly that here. Christ is faithful as the son over God's house, and guess what? We are his house. Now, there is a condition placed here at the end, just to, just to make us feel a bit nervous. Uh, if indeed we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope in which we glory. But don't lose the fact that we are God's house. And that means that all of us matter, and all of us are in this together. And what I love about the way we do church is that we do all have a place in this, and we, we, we hopefully can see that. So let's be faithful today. Now, I told you about that place I went to, Squarey's uh, Court, and it's a manor house, and they've got a vineyard there, and guess what is in the vineyard? It's grapes, right? Because they're producing wine. How do you produce grapes? Well, it's taken them years to build it up. And if they'd struggled and strived and, you know, strained really hard, would that have made the grapes grow faster? No, it wouldn't. The grapes are just growing because they're on the vine. (laughs) The fruit is being produced because, guess what, it's all in the right place and it's the right conditions and the soil is good and so on. And if we want to see the fruit of any of this, but in particular today we're thinking about faithfulness, we don't get it by just walking out of church and thinking, I must try harder, must try harder, must try harder. We get it by just remaining in God. And letting the Spirit work in us by staying close to the vine and by fixing our thoughts on Jesus. And it's as simple as that. You might say, well, my thoughts wander off. Just gently, don't beat yourself up, but just gently, we're going to look at gentleness next week. So there you go. Gently bring yourself back to God. So I'm going to just return to him, fix my thoughts again on Jesus. I'd like love to invite Richard just gonna play gently before the rest of the band come in. And we're just gonna have a moment soaking in God's presence. We are his house. And we all share in the heavenly calling. And that doesn't mean we look to ourselves. No, it means this morning we fix our thoughts on Jesus. He's our leader. He's our apostle. He's the high priest. The one who provides the access that we need to God the Father. He died on the cross to set us free from our sins. And all that's required of us is to put our trust in him and to fix our eyes on him. So we just do that now. Holy Spirit, we invite you. We invite you actually to move in power so that we might see Jesus. Just have quiet as Richard plays and Just allow the Holy Spirit to move in you. Bless you, Lord. I bless you now for what you're about to be doing in the next few moments.
sometimes under our breath it can just be helpful to just speak the name of Jesus maybe to say come Lord Jesus the gift of speaking in tongues can help us to fix our thoughts on Jesus If you'd like to know more about that, I'd love to talk to you about it. I'd pray for you to receive the gift of tongues if you have it. It's a good gift. Music can be a great help. Fix your thoughts on Jesus. where it will and so it is with the Spirit we welcome your Holy Spirit you do what you want to do you are the Lord Spirit says today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts we've come to share in Christ just know that you can enter you might disqualify yourself, but God doesn't disqualify you. You can enter into the presence of Almighty God. the rest of the band to join Richard. We we'll keep fixing our eyes on Jesus. We're going to speak the name of Jesus in this place. So much you join uh, with the band will stand.
the drums going there Kenny just um, can you just put up the uh, the, the last bit um, Jesus the next one next one uh, shout Jesus in the uh, streets that one that one keep going this one okay can we just um, I just want us to think of our streets okay think of our enemies think of our family and let's just speak the name of Jesus over these people. Our streets, our enemies, and our family. Okay. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. 
let's do that again. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus from the streets, Jesus in the dark. down now shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness for every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus your name is Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. So may the peace of the Lord Christ send you. May he guide you through the wilderness. May he protect you through the storm. And may he bring you back rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you back rejoicing once again through these doors. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Now, um, there's tea and coffee, and um, bless you. Actually, I'd love it. Just one second. Um, but sometimes, um, <clears throat> so please feel free to go there. But sometimes, you know, you're pressing in, and you need a bit, you need support, you need help. And um, there may be different ways to do that. You can grab someone near you, and they can pray with you. You can just talk with someone. You can, you know, do that outside of this morning service. But I just want to offer an opportunity, um, and my wife and I are going to stand here. And if anyone would like to come up and just be prayed with, it doesn't. Have, it can be anything or nothing. At all. We just pray with you, and um, do come up because sometimes you think like you're pressing in and you you're getting near to the high priest, you, but you're just still on a journey. So just come. And we'd love to pray for you. And I don't suppose, while they're doing that, we could just once more sing that other song, The Thousand Generations. Would that be okay? Or just whatever. Sing another song. You're just not, you don't look convinced at all. But um, sing something, and then while we're doing that, and then you're off the hook. Is that right? Yeah.